Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adveta Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Yibo, welcome Shrivani. Yeah, Connie's saying there's been some trouble with Zoom today. I know that Govind Madhava Prabhu, you also had earlier some trouble with Zoom. Are you hearing me now, Prabhu? I think still he's not hearing. Welcome, Vishnu Priya. Haribo. Haribo. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adeta Kadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda ah. So today I thought we would sing one of the bhajans of Bhaktivinoda Thakur that many of us do at this time of the day, Gaur Arti, and I'll pull up that screen in a minute, but just a few words on Lord Gaur, Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya was born in India at a time when everyone who was living thought that the earth was going through the greatest possible turmoil it had ever faced. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, this is the nature of the material world. Everyone is convinced. This time, it's never been worse. This is the worst it's ever been. We're in a serious situation. And Lord Chaitanya came in the midst of uh, class struggle in the midst of religious struggle, uh, political struggle. And he united the whole of India through sacred sound, through singing of God's names. He would create these mass gatherings in the street of upwards of a million people. And they would just sing, they would just sing God's name. Lord Chaitanya says, I don't care if you are a woman or if you are a man. I don't care if you are rich or if you are poor, if you are Hindu or Muslim or Christian or Jew or Zoroastrian or Shinto or animist. You just sing Krishna's holy names and let these holy names, through the power of sincere chanting, let these holy names do all the work. Just listen with your heart. And his favorite mantra to sing, we'll just do this for a few moments here as we move into this beautiful bhajan by Bhakti Yunan Thakur. His favorite mantra is, what was his favorite mantra? Sugopi Palakala. The Maha Mantra. The Maha Mantra. Good answer. Three simple words, three simple names. But these three simple names are like paving a great highway from our tongues all the way to the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna. And they come, if we call them with a sincerity, they come dancing down this highway until they're dancing on our tongues. You can chant if you're in jail. You can chant if you're in the hospital. 
You can chant if you are welcoming a child into the world. You can chant if you're saying goodbye to a loved one. You can chant in good times. You can chant in bad times. You can chant before lunch. You can chant after dinner. You can chant when you go to the bathroom. You can chant any time, all the time. Because the name is so pure that it purifies anything that it touches. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Ram Ram Hari Hari Oh Hari Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram 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 Hari Hari Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare I see Srivani's ID card there. Srivani, if you ever want to chant, you can just take yourself off mute. Sing. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ramo, Hare Ramo, Ramo Ramo, Hare Hare. What is the power of this holy name? Somehow, as soon as we hear the name, everything falls back into place. And we, Srila Prabhupada, he was describing, sometimes someone is looking up at the sun through the clouds and they think, the clouds are covering the sun. And then he said, but if you just fly in an airplane above the clouds, then the sun is always shining. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ramu, Hare Ramu, Ramu Ramu, Hare Hare. Vishnu, you please sing. Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Murdas Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. 
Tu Gopi Devi. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Tani, you want to spin? You want to take yourself off mute and sing with us? Uh, Connie came with me to India. Did we go to Jagannath Puri together, Connie? Oh, Connie's so lucky. Please sing, sing with us. Sing, sing for us for the moment. Hare Krishna, as you would like. But you got to take yourself off mute. You know how to do that, Connie? No, I don't know the whole. You know, I don't know the whole fancy melody. Okay, well, we'll be happy with anyone that comes to your heart or your mind. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama now. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama. Hare Thank you, Connie. Hare Bo. Kairava Devi Dasi, would you like to sing for us one time? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Rama. All right. <clears throat> now I'm going to share my screen here. Let's see what we have. Hmm? Can you guys see the lyrics for that song? Is it coming? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. So this... Uh, song is a meditation on the experience of doing kirtan with Lord Chaitanya and all of his associates. So it's a little bit um, uh, transcendental. If you were in a very practical state of mind, you might, you might Look at this and say, what does this have to do with the coronavirus, Gauravani? What are we singing all of this fancy stuff? But um, this, uh, this bhajan is uh, about the meeting place between the material and spiritual world. This bhajan takes us to that place where the material world fades and we begin to be pulled into the gateway created by Lord Chaitanya and his associates into the spiritual world, okay? So, I'll go through more quickly since we only have a few minutes left. Let's learn this part together. Jaya Jaya Gora Chandair, everyone. Jaya Jaya Gora Chandair. Arotika Shobha. Arotika Shobha. Janavi Tata Vane. Jagamana Lobha. Jagamana Lobha. So I'm going to just uh, um, mute you guys, but please sing loudly, okay? You know, I want you guys all to sing loudly. So uh, what are we saying? And this is the chorus. We can sing this together. All glories to Sri Chaitanya and his revolutionary chanting party, his associates, who are being worshipped on the bank of the Ganga 
in such a beautiful way that the minds of the whole world are being captured. Hmm. All glories, all glories to the beautiful Arti ceremony of Lord Chaitanya. This Gorarti is taking place in a grove on the banks of the Janavi, the Ganga, and is attracting the minds of all living entities in the universe. On Lord Chaitanya's right is Lord Nityananda, and on his left is Sri Gadadhar. Nearby stands Sri Advaita, and Sri Vas Thakur is holding an umbrella over Lord Chaitanya's head. Lord Chaitanya sat down on a jeweled throne, and the demigods, headed by Lord Brahma, performed the Arti ceremony. Okay. Kiva Jayo Jayo Gora Chande Aruti Kashobha Janavi Tatavane Jagamana Lobha Shivani Prabhu, please. Iva Jaya Jaya Goro Chande Aruti Koshobha Jano Bhi Tato Bune Jagomono Lobha Dakhi Neni Tai Chan Bami Gadadhar Nikate Advaita Srinivasa Chatradhar Please number three, Srivani. Boshi Ache Goro Chan Ratno Shinghashani Aroti Kareno Brahma Adi Devogani All together Kiva Jayo Jayo Gura Chande Aruti Kasho Bhajanavi Tatavane Jagamana Lobha Nadahari Sarkar and other associates of Lord Chaitanya fan him with chamras, whisks, and devotees headed by Sanjay Pandit Mukunda Datta and Vasu Ghosh sing sweet kirtan. Conch shells, bells, and kartals resound, and the Murdanga plays very sweetly. This kirtan music is supremely sweet and relishable to hear. The brilliance of Lord Chaitanya's face conquers millions upon millions of moons, and the garland of forest flowers around his neck shines. Number four, please, Srivani. Nara Hari Adi Kori Chamor Dulai Shanjayo Mukund Bashu Ghoshadi Gai Shanka Baje Ganta Baje Baje Karatal Madhura Ridanga Baje Paramarasal
Please, number six. Bohukoti Chandra Jini Bado no chalo Golo de Shine Bono Mala Kore Chalo Malo Chalo Mala. All right, together. Kiva Jayo. Shiva is there. Sukadev Goswami, the speaker of the Bhagavatam, is there. Narda Muni, they are all there. And their voices are choked with the ecstasy of transcendental love. Thus, Takur Bhaktivinoda envisions the glory of Lord Sri Chaitanya. Kiba Shiva. Narada Preme Gada Gada Bhakati Vino Deke Gorara Sampada Shiva Shukha Narada Preme Gada Gada Bhakati Bino Da Dakhe Gorara Shampada Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna, Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama Rama, Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna Krishna, Krishna, Hare 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 Ramo, Hare Ramo, Ramo Ramo, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ramo, Hare Ramo, Ramo Ramo, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ramo, Hare Ramo. Ramo Ramo Hare 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 Krishna 
हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण कृष्णा कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे गौर हरि बो हरि बो हरि बो नेताई गौर ताई गौर हरि बो हरि बो हरि बो गौर हरि बो ताई गौर हरि बो हरि बो हरि बो हरि बो ताई गौर हरि बो hari bo hari bo gaur hari bo jai sachinandan gaur hari jai sachinandan gaur hari kali yuga pavan gaur hari patita pavan gaur hari आदि विहारी गौर हरि मायपुर चंद गौर हरि गौर हरि जय गौर हरि गौर हरि जय गौर हरि गौर हरि बो हरि बो हरि बो निताय गौर हरि बो No, as we move now into our Bhagavan study, I just, I know how limited my senses are to taste all of the nectar that's described by our acharyas, but at least when we can see through the eyes of a divine like we get a glimpse at, at least to what he sees. Us to at least begin to get a taste for wanting to see. Jai, I'd like to welcome my dear friend and uh, loving Diksha uh, Guru, Jasivar Prabhu. Thank you for being here, and thank you all for being here. What a what a incredible group of souls how lucky we are sometimes it's described that you know like when a captain has a ship this is the bhajan boat you know shastivar prabhu is the captain like one of the, one of the mates on the ship you know and when the boat sets sail you look around and you think i hope this crew is worthy i feel blessed to have such a worthy Hi, Captain. Take us away, oh Captain. Hare Krishna. Can everyone hear me loud and clear? Can you hear me loud and clear? Go, Rani Bhu. Hare Bhu. Jai Ho. Dear devotees, thank you so much for joining this evening. 
we have a slide deck full of nectar this evening. We, we have 40 different slides that we're going to go over. So we get an opportunity to really dive deep into the words of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakura. So let me offer my most humble obeisances to our spiritual masters. Namon Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya, Bhutale, Srimali Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine, Namaste, Saraswati Devam, Gauravani Vacharane, Nirvashesha Sanyavadi, Pastatari Sitarane. Vanchakalpa Tirubascha, Kripa Sindhu Vaevacha, Patita Nam Pavane Pyo, Vaisnave Pyo, Namon Maha. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Adwaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasari Gaur Bhaktivinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Namo Bhakti Vinodaya, Satchitananda Namani, Gora Shakti Zubaya, Rupanugavadaya Te. Jai Ho. So, Today we're going to be finishing off the first section. Let's have the slides up, Mataji. Today we're going to be finishing off the first section, the first branch of Sri Sri Kalyana Kopa Turu. Dear devotees, please listen very carefully to these wonderful instructions given by our great Vaishnava Acharyas. We're going to review what we've been through so far in this Upadesha branch. And then we ask everyone to open up your ears very nicely and listen to these beautiful narrations. Today we're going to focus on listening very deeply to Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur giving us these various enlightenments during the course of the concluding part of Upadesha. And then we'll end it off by singing the final song of this chapter. And then hopefully we'll have time to discuss. But there's many different sections to this. So I would request anyone, some, something that jumps out, please offer your input. If there's some question you have, or if you have some comment on these various topics or if there's some pastimes that's deeply connected that may help us all understand the instruction better, please, please chime in. Next slide, Mataji. So here's our agenda for today. So, so far, we've concluded what I want to focus on as this very important part of the Upadesha, where Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he divides his instructions into three different parts. And I put a very beautiful sloka that's connected to these three different parts. And it's from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Majalila, 19th chapter, verse number 149. And it goes like this. Krishna Bhakta Nais Kamya Tev Shanta Bhukti Mukti Siddhi Kama Shakale Ashanta. So, Shanti and peace is described here. Can someone read that translation of that sloka? Because a devotee starting from there. I can read it. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Because a devotee of Lord Krishna is desireless, he is peaceful. Fruit of workers desire material enjoyment. Jnanis desire liberation, and the yogis desire material opulence. Therefore, they are all lusty and cannot be peaceful. So this verse is a verse that Srila Prabhupada quoted quite a bit. And it describes the three sections that Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur has divided this first part of his instructions. You'll see I've grouped them into the karmis, those who are lusty for food of um, 
sense gratification, the Ganis who are the mental speculators, and then the yogis, those who are looking to get mystic powers to merge into the Brahman or to become expert in Hatha Yoga. So you, we can see how Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur has very systematically lined up these three different uh, types of individuals within this material world. This very nicely sums up the different types of individuals, the jivas we have in this material world. As opposed to the devotees who are nice karma, right? Or kinshu chayina. We were talking about this the other day. Uh, in Bengal, at the end of all of these wonderful bhajans, the devotees, they chant this beautiful verse, Or kinshu chayina. I don't want anything else. Is Sri Vani Mataji here? Yes, Prabhu. Haribol. Haribol. Can you give us one of the lines that they sing along with that? Aar or can you ch China, Aar kichu China, Nita ego rango vine, Aar kichu China, Gorangir nam vine, Aar kichu China, Aar kichu China, Aar kichu China. Beautiful. So, this is the mood of the devotees that they only want to sing the holy name, birth after birth, no matter what situation they're in, to be in association of Lord Garanga, to engage in devotional service. They don't want this material wealth or bodily beauty, to worship the demigods, to be engaged in scientific, philosophical speculation. All these things are distractions and ultimately they lead us down to a very, very dark alley and they, they hijack our spiritual life. So we've already reviewed all of those subjects on the left hand side of this page. And for the rest of the Upadesha, we're going to go into what we call anastas or weeds, these various different weeds. And I have to learn how to control my screen so I can see the slides because everything is, I can't read the slides because everything's covered up. Let me minimize this. You can, uh... So, yeah, I got it. I got it now. So the anastas are these various weeds. Do we have any gardeners out there in the, in the audience who like to plant vegetables and- Inspiring gardeners. Yeah. Inspiring gardeners. So you all know that no matter how beautiful the plant you are putting in the ground and you want to cultivate it, whether it's a fruit, a flower, or a tree, something comes along with it that is undesirable. What is that called? Weed. Anyone? Exactly. It's a weed. It's something that interferes with that particular manifestation, whether it be a fruit, a flower, what have you. Interferes with that particular plant from growing. And we are interested in the seed, the bhakti lata, the, the tree of devotional service. And we have to deal also with these different types of weeds or anathers. So today we're going to go one by one and we're going to hear from Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur about these various unwanted consequences that arise from these various different items you see there at the bottom. I've quoted a nice sloka from Bhakti Rasamrita. Sindhu ado shradha tata sadhu sangha ta bhajana kriya tata o nartha niriti shat tata o nishta ruchi tata ta shaktis tata bhavas tata prema bhutanchate sadakana ayam prema pradurbhave bhavet krama. This 
is very close to, if you look, or if we'll get to it, when we get to the last song, you'll see that, practically speaking, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur is using these very same words in the last song that we're going to be singing today. So he's very closely linked this sloka with what we're going to be reading today. These various, here it's said that first, by Shraddha we come in contact with sadhus and we begin the process of devotional service once we become frustrated with living in, in this material world. Once we become frustrated with karma, with jnana, and yoga, then we once again, by some good fortune, come in contact with devotees and begin the process of devotional service. But we should know that beginning a process of devotional service, like planting that seed in a garden, does not mean that you can just plant your beautiful flower and then forget about it. It's just going to grow and it's going to produce many flowers and there's no maintenance involved. Not at all. All the weeds will come and choke your your plant. And the same thing with the plant of devotional service. We have to be very attentive to take out these weeds. And this section of Upadesha is assisting us in understanding what those particular Nathas are. And Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur is giving us some recommendations on how we can nicely pluck out those weeds and not affect our creep of devotion. One thing that we always have to be aware of that we cannot confuse the tree of devotion with these various weeds or we defeat our whole purpose. We have to be very careful that we don't pluck out and destroy our beautiful tree of devotion in the process of eliminating these various anathas. So are there any questions before we move on to these various different topics from anyone in our wonderful Assembly of Devotees? Maybe I'll just, you know, just to uh, address this, Prabhu, you know, um, sometimes uh, because I, I grew up in Prabhupada's movement, I sometimes can also see how it's perceived from the outside sometimes. When we talk about all of these challenges to spiritual life, sometimes it can seem to be that we're you know, overwhelmingly negative. Focusing on the difficulties and challenges. I think you've addressed that just a little bit, but I just thought to bring that to your attention that you know, this is such a precious thing, like you're saying, Bakuna Thakur is just warning us how to keep it safe, how to how to take it seriously, how not to take it too seriously. Maybe you could speak just for another moment. We, that we don't want to be negative and, and lose our take enthusiasm by being negative, but we also don't want to be too negative. So, yeah, absolutely. So, the nectar of devotional service is in the process of devotional service itself. So when we are performing our sadhana, when we are chanting the holy names of the Lord, when we are worshiping the deities, when we're taking Krishna Prasad, then automatically these wonderful fruits of devotional service will make us blissful. That is how the Nectar Devotion starts off. It's such a beautiful chapter. If you read the Bhakti Rasamrita, it talks about how when we engage in devotional service, immediately all of our material miseries are immediately defeated. They're immediately destroyed. And we begin to taste the Nectar of, of devotional service. So when you plant that beautiful flower, isn't it? you immediately see that beautiful flower in your garden. So the, the result is there immediately by seeing when you plant that flower in your garden. But if you do not protect that flower by removing the weeds, then it becomes choked. So Prabhupada said that by chanting the holy name of Krishna, then you, you immediately experience transcendental ecstasy. The, the beauty 
of Krishna consciousness is automatically revealed. Just like when you enter into a, a temple in Shishirada Govinda or Shishirada Madhav is there, no one can say that they're not going to immediately experience transcendental bliss. Right? Shushukam Kartam Avayam. The process of devotional service is completely blissful. Parama Kuruna Paudui Jana Nitai Gora Chanda. Right? Sava Avatara Sarasiramani Kevala Ananda Kanta. I mean, this process of devotional service is, is fully blissful. It's like tasting honey. You immediately experience that wonderful sweet taste. So the process of devotional service is Kevalananda Kanda. It's full of bliss. It's full of nectar. And we can directly experience it immediately. But we have to be able to maintain the nectar of Krishna consciousness by protecting that transcendental tree of devotional service from being choked by these various anathas. Otherwise, what will happen is we will lose our taste and we will go away. Does that help? We have a nice point in the chat by Sugopi Radha Devidasi. She writes, I have also heard that if we don't eliminate the anarthas when we chant, we water both the weeds and the bhakti lata, which becomes problematic later. Thank you, Sugopi, for the wonderful point. Very nice. And that is how the choking happens. Eventually we become confused and the wheat becomes more powerful than the original transcendental tree of devotion and then it chokes out that devotional service. Very good point. Any other points? Devotees are more positive than anyone. And the perfect example is, who goes out on the streets and chant and dance except devotees? If you go to 42nd Street in Manhattan where everyone is looking for sense gratification, if you go to Hollywood Boulevard, who are the most happiest individuals out there? Who's there chanting and dancing in ecstasy? It's devotees. <laughs> So the devotees are the ones that are the happiest. They're the ones that are actually overflowing with bliss. Otherwise, why are they on the streets chanting and and it's establishing the, themselves as as well wishes of the living entity? Because they're experiencing that happiness, that transcendental bliss. All right. So we have a lot to cover today and. Let's move on to the very first song where we're talking about sannyas. Srivani Mataji and Vishnu Priya Mataji, over to you. Haki Tato Dom Puji Shori Nachao. My dear mind, why do you want to disguise yourself as a sannyasi? As much as you decorate yourself externally with this grab to that God. degree, guard. As much as you decorate yourself externally with this garb, to that same degree, you deceive yourself internally with this hoax, worshipping your own false pride. You simply make a show of your material body by artificially accepting the dress of the renounced order. Antur Bishuddha Karo Krishna Mrito Shada Karo Paan Jivan Shahuje Jai 
বাধা নাহি পায় উদপায় কর সন্ধান Now please try to understand my advice on how to become a true sanyasi. Just make your heart completely pure and constantly drink the nectar of Krishna consciousness. Search for that lifestyle in which your spiritual life can be executed easily and automatically, free from any distracting obstacles to pure devotion. অনায়াসে যাহা পাও তাহি তুষ্ট হয়ে যাও আরম্বরে না কর প্রয়াস পূর্ণ বস্ত্র যদি নাই Even if you do not have proper clothes to wear, just wear a loin cloth, dear brother. And in cold weather, you can simply wear an old torn quilt. Aguru chandano nai, nittika tilako bhai, harer badole dharo mala. Eilupe asha paash, shukhadir kubi laash. There is no need for fancy sandalwood pulp scented with perfume, my dear brother. You can use some ordinary earth or clay to mark your forehead with tilak. Your fancy necklaces can be exchanged for a nice tulsi mala. Living like this in such a simple state of mind, All your nonsense external arrangements for so-called happiness will diminish and you will thus be able to escape from the burning fever of materialistic existence. In reality, it is complete renunciation that is the wealth of the sannyas ashram. By following this rule, one would certainly never look forward to receiving respect from others. Beware, dear brother, deliverance from this material world is not possible for one who wants to get such respect by taking sannyas. Instead, he gets ensnared in mundane existence due to constantly maintaining the conceited pride of subtle profit or adoration and distinction. Tumito Chaitanya Dash, Hori Bhakti Tabo Ash. You are actually an eternal servant of Lord Chaitanya and your real interest as such is devotion to Sri Hari. What other wonderful thing could you get from the external form of the sannyas ashram? Casting all false prestige to a far distant place? Make your residence in transcendentally beautiful realm, far beyond the Varnashram Dharma system, and live on the mercy of the Rupanuga Vaishnavas as your only life-giving substance. It is actually not even necessary to introduce oneself as a Vaishnava and one should never try to thereby make a show of external pomp and grandeur. Bhakti Vinod's humble submission to you is that you should constantly sing songs about the glorious qualities of Radha and Krishna at the top of your lungs. 
Ahí va. Mono, tú me pides shada rato. Ajudha, Mothura, Maya, Ashi, Kanti. Madhuri, before you go on to this particular song, I like to go over a few points about the sannyas section before we go on. Um, some observations, and you know, again, Shri Bhakti Vinod Thakur is talking about some of the weeds connected with sannyas, and Lord Krishna spends a lot of time in the Shri Bhagavad Gita as well, going over these various anarthas. In the third chapter, he begins discussing how Mitya Chara Chaucha say that one who restrains the senses and organs of action, but who mind dwells on sensed objects, certainly deludes himself and is called a pretender. So, so just for, the, or if we have any couple of people here who are not familiar with the term of sannyas, it is like it is like the, the, the senior renunciant in the tradition, right? The most respected elder renunciant uh, is called a sannyasi. So he's saying, don't externally try to become senior uh, a senior monk. Why why chase that thing? Is that okay, Justin? Just to give that absolutely, talk. yeah. So a sannyasi is one who is in the highest pronounced order of life. He's one who quote unquote has renounced or renounced the world. So what we teach in our Vaishnav culture that to renounce the world is one process, but the better process is to accept the world and to engage whatever resources we have in the service of the Lord, understanding actually that we have nothing to renounce because nothing's ours in the first place. So sannyas is something that's very, very important to our Krishna consciousness movement, no doubt. So we need to realize that first, that Lord Chaitanya, he took sannyas to kickstart this Krishna consciousness movement 500 years ago, and Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur took sannyas to spread Krishna consciousness all over Bharat, and then Srila Prabhupada took sannyas to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. And we have many, many sannyasis in the International Society for Krishna Consciousness who have continued to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. Without these dedicated sannyasis, Krishna consciousness could not have been spread to the extent that it has all over the world. But that is the beautiful plant, the flower plant. But Thakur Bhakti Vinod Thakur is describing the various weeds in connection to the sannyas order. And we have to be very, very careful that we do not become carried away by just the external garb that I am renounced when in actuality there is so, so much material attachment underneath the so-called renunciation. In Hindi, what do they call them? Punga Pandit? Or this is something that's very popular in India where you see many who take the saffron dress, but they actually, they want to use a saffron dress just to make a living. So I just wanted to share one, one story in my personal life in this connection. And it's very, con very much connected to this wonderful title that Bhaktivinoda Thakur has given to this section. So after Srila Prabhupada disappeared from this planet, of course, in those days, we were brahmacharis, we were monks, celibate monks as well, not sannyasis, but brahmachari. So brahmachari is the first order of life when you're a student and you're also living a very renounced life, free from family, quote unquote, uh, responsibilities. So it is usually the duty of this, the, the disciple to approach his spiritual master and get guidance <clears throat> as to whether that, 
got something in my throat. <clears> throat> that disciple should continue being a brahmachari, or he should move on to a grihastra ashram, a family life, or to move on to the sannyas order of life. So we had a very, very robust group of devotees in Chicago. And at very close after Srila Prabhupada left, 78, 79. So His Holiness Bhakti Titha Swami, who was a sannyasi, he was there, a very dear god brother of mine. He was there in Chicago as well. And I approached Maharaj and I said, Maharaj, what should I do? Srila Prabhupada has left. Should I become like you and become a sannyasi? And in those days, if someone wanted to become a sannyasi, especially Prabhupada very much encouraged sannyas more than he encouraged his disciples to become married. So I was expecting him to say, yeah, Shastivara, you know, the householders, they're in Maya. You need to become a sannyasi like me. <laughs> But actually, Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj, he actually, he got tears in his eyes and he looked at me when he put his hand on my shoulder. And he actually said something very, very close to this song. And that's why it brings back that remembrance. And he said, sannyas is not as important as being a good devotee. Hmm? He, he gave me that instruction with all sincerity. And... I really appreciated his honesty because many of our God brothers, they saw sannyas as a ticket to having close association with Srila Prabhupada. Many of them, they took sannyas just to get direct access to Srila Prabhupada and they did not keep those vows for very long. And we have to be very careful when it comes to this order, we have to be very, very respectful as we enter into this order. And that is the experience that I've had that is very, very difficult. And I offer my respect for obeisances to all those devotees that have entered into this order with the desire of pleasing the spiritual master and found it to be very difficult. But, um, point I'm making is that devotional service is something that is not limited by any type of doesn't matter what situation you are in, whether you're a householder, whether you're a brahmachari, or whether you're a grihastha or a sannyasi, if you are sincere and you are nicely engaged in devotional service and Krishna will remove all obstacles. And that doesn't matter if you're young, if you're old, or what type of dress you wear. The devotional service is so powerful that it can purify us and give us the supreme perfection in any condition of life. Any questions? All right, so let's continue to the next topic. My dear mind, you are always attached to all the different places of pilgrims, such as Ayodhya, Mathura, Maya, Kashi, Varanasi, Kanchipura, Avantiya, Dwaravati, and so on. Tumi chaho bhrumi bare, e shakol bare bare, muktad kori bar tare. E kibol tabo bhram, nilatho kori sram, tos kini e kini nahi kare. 
you want to travel to all these holy places of pilgrimage again and again simply to the sake of obtaining liberation from the material miseries. But we actually see that your heart is not becoming resultly fixed up by going to all these places. Therefore, all of you wanderings are simply useless labor for nothing tangible. Into fall, Shadhu Shango, Shadhu Shange, Anturango, Krishna Bhajan Manohar. The ripened fruit and real benefit of any place of pilgrimage is the company of the pure-hearted devotees of the Lord. Establishing intimate and friendly relations with such devotees let your mind be captivated by performing the charming worship of Lord Krishna in their association. Actually, any place in the entire world becomes a worshipable place of pilgrimage if devotees are living there. Thus, you should immediately seek out such a place wherever you happen to be and you should become fixed up in Krishna consciousness by constantly remaining in the company of such devotees. Personally, I never bother to visit any so-called place of pilgrimage which is devoid of the presence of unalloyed devotees. For what other worthwhile benefit could possibly gain by taking the trouble of walking to such far away places? Only that place which is graced by the presence of the devotees is actually Vrindavan and only at that place can you come into contact with unlimited spiritual pleasure. Liberation personified is herself the humble maid servant of that place which is surcharged with devotion to Krishna. All the water at that place is the celestial Gangas. Every hill there is Giri Govardhan, and the very earth is indeed Vrindavan. Only such a place can manifest the appearance of the eternal spiritual joy, which is revealed by the Lord's pleasure potency. <laughs> I ask you now, dear brother, what benefit would I get by circumambulating all of the holy places of pilgrimage? Personally, my vow is to serve the Vaishnavas with firm resolution and untiring endeavor. Hmm. Another beautiful point that Srila Prabhupada always made. And that was this wonderful slug from Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto, uh, text number, chapter 84, text number 13. Yes, Yatma Bhuti Kunape Tridatuke, Swadit Kala Tadeshu Boma Ichite, Yatirta Bhuti Saline Nakarhi Chit, Janeshu Vikyeshu Saeva Gokara. This is a verse that Srila Prabhupada quoted many, many times into connection in the connection of how to properly visit the holy places the theaters um, it's one thing to go to these holy places and just take bath in the various rivers but the real benefit of holy place 
is to associate with those wonderful sadhus that are there and to hear the nectar of Krishna consciousness as Sri Bhaktivinoda Thakur is saying. I'll share one short realization that I had. I traveled extensively in Orisha um, after Srila Prabhupada's departure. Uh, my good god brother Bhagavat and I, we traveled all over Orisha to very, very remote villages uh, preaching Krishna consciousness and making life members. And one thing I realized that was very really extraordinary, although Arisha had many, many holy places and many, many temples, there was no type of sadhu sangha or class going on. I remember one time I literally stayed in a temple. I They put us in, in a lot of the temples in Arisha. They have a special guest room in, within the temple for sadhus and traveling devotees. So I literally stayed right next to the temple and I could look out my room and I could see that when they opened the the, the uh, deities doors, I could see the Pajari and the deities. And I was there for a few days because we would go there, do our morning program, and then we would go out and preach. And literally, really, when they did Artik and Arisha, all they did is they took the gong and they banged on the gong. Gong, bang, 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 like that. Just only the gong. No kirtan, no class, nothing. Just gong. And I, and I was, I was, <laughs> I used to, <laughs> I, 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 would, I was sitting in that temple chanting in my rounds and just thanking Srila Prabhupada for the wonderful, wonderful nectar that he gave us in Krishna consciousness because in our temples, you have the ecstatic kirtan with kaltal to madanga, and we have the ecstatic classes given by all these traveling devotees and sannyasis. It's just full of nectar. You have, you know, the, the beautiful deities. In this particular temple, and I don't want to commit any offenses, all I'm saying is I'm just passing you some experience. They did not change the deities' clothes, literally. It must have been for months. There was the only thing that Artik was just a lamp, no flower, nothing. They would just offer the lamp, and then there'd be one old bubble that would just bang on a gong, 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 bang, 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 bang. So, you know, we should be very happy that Prabhupada has made these holy places all over the planet. It doesn't matter where you go, if you're in Japan or if you're in Russia or. Can you imagine anywhere you can go and enter these spiritual tirtas where you can get Krishna Prashadam, you can see the beautiful deities, you can hear Nectarine Kirtan, and then you can hear this wonderful philosophy of Krishna consciousness. Gauravani and myself was having this conversation, right? Bolo Krishna, Bhaja Krishna, Kodo Krishna, Shiksha. These are three combinations of nectar and Krishna consciousness, right? All three of them work very nicely together. It's chanting Hare Krishna, worshiping Krishna, and then learning Krishna's teaching. And we're doing all of that here in this Sangha. Hmm? Bhajan literally means worship. So these bhajans, hearing these bhajans, Remembering them is literally worshiping the Supreme Lord in the topmost way. Hmm? Chanting Hare Krishna and chanting these beautiful songs that are reminding us how to pick the weeds around our people devotion and learning these transcendental teachings. Any comments, questions? Okay, let's continue floating down that Transit into river. Krishna Bhakti Asha Guru, Achu Nana Brotodhuri. 
राधा कृष्ण करीते प्रसन्न Be careful, my dear mind, that you don't become bewildered by ritualistic vows, with an aim to please Radha Krishna and make them favorably disposed to you. You accept various type of austere vows. You consider that this will be conducive to practicing devotional service. Bhakti je shahuj tato, tite tar achhe shot. डिशन Which is already existing in your heart, but you should be careful to consider that by undertaking unnecessarily difficult vows and austerities, you don't destroy the simplicity of the natural bhakti process. Krishna arthe kai klesh, tar fall achhe shesh, kintu taha shamanu na hai. भक्तर बाधक होक्ति डिशन and it will prevent you from getting the real benefit of devotion instead you will only get the benefit of the results of the austerity kintu bhebe dekho bhai tapashar kaj nai jodi dhori aradhito hon bhakti jodi na folilo tapashay tuchcho phol vaishnav na loy kadachan But just try to understand this, my dear brother. If one is worshiping Hari, then there is no need to labor for penances and austerities. If devotional service does not manifest as the result of some type of austerity, then the insignificant result of that austerity will never be accepted by a true Vaishnava at any time. Bhakti. प्रिंसिपल्सिफिकेव that is according to differences in receptivity of different persons there is a definite difference in their rightful capacity in devotional service bhakti vinod's humble submission is that you should just become a saragrahi and accept the sense of complete surrender to krishna and thus becoming freed from and transcendental to all types of scriptural rules and regulations sagrai so this this wonderful section is one of my favorite parts is described in in shri chaitanya bhagavat and i'm sure you all know this story it's the story of the brahmachari who was very austere who wanted to participate in lord chaitanya's confidential kirtan has everyone heard that story Yes, that is such a beautiful story. So very quickly, so before Lord Chaitanya began to expand his Krishna conscious movement to all and sundry, he used to have very intimate kirtans in Sri Vasanga, and he would not let anyone in there except his most confidential devotees, Lord Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadadhar, Bhakti Shri Pandit. 
they would have these wonderful kirtans all night in Sri Vasanga. And sometimes, because it was at Sri Vasa's house, various individuals, they would try to sneak in the kirtan. And there was this one brahmachari who was a very, very good brahmachari, and he was very, very austere. He performed a lot of austerities. And actually, he only drank milk. He was very, very austere. And he, so he approached Sri Vas and he said, Please, I, I, I hear these kirtans. I know they're so amazing. Please, just let me one time join this kirtan. You can sneak me in there and hide me. I don't have to be there. Just sneak me in somehow or another, by hook or by crook. So Sri Vas being a wonderful Vaishnava, being very compassionate, during one of these evening kirtans, he snuck this brahmachari in there and hid him in an inconspicuous place where no one could see him. So the kirtan started and Lord Chaitanya started dancing and the Dvetacharya started dancing. And all of a sudden Lord Chaitanya said, stop the kirtan. Stop it right now. There is some impure rascal that has come into this kirtan uninvited. And then Sri Vas came to Lord Chaitanya and said, Prabhu, there's, there's no one here, it's just us. And then Lord Chaitanya said, started the kirtan again, and then he stopped it again. He said, no, there is some impure person in this kirtan. So then Sri Vas said, oh my God, I'm in trouble. So he went to Lord Chaitanya and he said, there's no one here, Prabhu, it's just this one brahmachari. He's very nice brahmachari, he's very, very austere. <laughs> he only drinks milk. So Lord Chaitanya roared like a lion. He says, who is this person that thinks he can hear my kirtan just because he's austere and he just drinks milk? Throw that rascal out immediately. And then the, meanwhile, the brahmachari was listening to Lord Chaitanya become so angry. And he ran out of the Sri Vasa's house very quickly. And he began to think in his mind. He says, you know what? <laughs> I may have been called a rascal by Lord Chaitanya. But I have seen whatever I've seen. I've seen even a few seconds of this wonderful, lovely transcendent to kids. I don't care. Lord Chaitanya may be angry at me now. I violated. I don't care. It was worth it. In his mind, he was thinking, <laughs> I may never see Lord Chaitanya again in millions of lives. <laughs> but it was worth it, even those few seconds. So Lord Chaitanya being the super soul within the heart of that brahmachari, he began to smile and he said, ah, ah. So this brahmachari, now he has developed the proper mood to hear my kirtan. So then he called Sri Vats. He said, okay, bring him back. You know, because he, he once again, he forgot about his austerities and he developed the bhav, the mood of devotion. That's the main thing, it's devotion. That's the most important thing. So Lord Chaitanya called him back and then he became one of the eternal associations of Lord Chaitanya. He didn't have to sneak in there. Any questions on that? So not by performing austerities can we bribe Krishna. I mean, we made, so Bhakti Ganot Thakur has very, very nicely described this, an author that can creep in, that we may think that we're so austere, we're so smart, that Krishna has, is forced to let us into his confidential service. Not at all. So let's continue. Oh, my dear mind, you are certainly most restless and flickering. You are not attracted by unalloyed devotees of the Lord who are free from crooked complications, but instead, you remain strongly attached to the company of sly, hypocritical cheaters. O 
বজ্রকে জানে যে তব সাধু জন সেই তার সঙ্গ তোমারে না চায় ক্রুর বেশ দেখো যার শ্রদ্ধা স্পদ সে তোমার ভক্তি করি পর তার those strange deviant imposters are considered by you to be sadhus and you are dancing merrily in their company and those who have a cruel and hard-hearted nature are your most worshipable objects of reverence in great devotion you fall down at the feet of such rascals bhakto sangho hoy jar ঠিকানিস <laughs> My dear mind giving up your unsteady flickering nature and abandoning the association of sly deceitful cheaters in a far distant place just worship the beautiful lotus feet of Krishna No Bhaktivinoda Thakur's Bhaktivinoda Thakur's autobiographical uh, poetry is so unique you know he he <clears throat> he's taking like a scan of the mind and his thoughts but he's crafting it into poetry and song he's speaking for our benefit I've just always found this that that quality of Bhaktivinoda Thakur's poetry to be so endearing how he you know he's not putting on a show for anybody he's just letting us you know into this inner dialogue so that we can be honest with ourselves in this process I I just love it so much Another is interesting thing is this um Guruni Prabhu and others is uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur's poems or uh, bhajans basically are written in simple Bengali language uh, but they are so very deep in meaning uh, as opposed to somebody write, writing poems in a very intricate classical way <laughs> and the meaning is not very easy to understand. Mm. I think that is a really interesting aspect of his poems. By the way, everyone, that was the voice of Sri Vani's wonderful husband, Dvaita Hari, my dear friend. Ah, thanks for clarifying that. I, I did ask Sri... Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you. You speak up more. I'd like to hear from you. One, one time I had asked a very similar comment to Sri Vani Mataji that It seems like Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur uses very, very simple words again and again and again. But he's able to craft them in such a way, because I've been reading these songs again and again. He's able to craft them in such a wonderful poetry. And when we translate them, the meaning is just so profound. So thanks for that comment, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Good. Hare Krishna. Good Yeah, um, to, to me, seeing the, the verses of that last song reminded me that, um, you know, the saying that um, the neophyte thinks he's the best devotee uh, and everyone else uh, is in various levels of maya or non-devotion and it uh i think when i when i saw that song um it very much seemed like uh it was talking to the mentality of the neophyte of course in one sense 
we're all neophytes, or at least I think of myself that way, but especially he seemed to be addressing the mentality of the, that, that how the mind cheats when you're a neophyte. Jai Prabhuji, thank you for that. And thank you for all attentively listening to all of these wonderful bhajans. You've been here all the time. Thank you, Gurudas Prabhu. Adi Bal. Gurudas Prabhu was one of those street chanters that you talked about out there singing, spreading joy of Mahaprabhu's movement, Silver Spring, Maryland. Let's see when that happens again. Prabhu is happening right now. When you chant the holy. Oh, lost you, Shasti Prabhu. Sorry. Yeah, when we sing the holy name in these downtowns, that name enters into the building. It enters into the asphalt, and it's constantly being resounded. And then when it goes there, the holy name is still being resounded right now. <laughs> the... Okay, let's move on to the next song. Ture Bodhi O Varuta Akokko Vayoshe Hai Bonchito Banchak Pai Kaili Nijo Shatan Trota My dear mind, I have this message to convey to you. Alas, how remorseful it is that you have sold your own individuality and freedom to those intelligently due to being cheated by other cheaters who dissuade you away from the path of spiritual life given you by your guru. At your tender and mature stage of spiritual realization, you listen to such cheaters only to be misled for the true path. Sampradaye dosh buddhi Dani tumi apta shuddhi Poribare hoile shabdhan Nani le pilak mala Dadi le dikhar jala Nidhe koile nobin vidhan you now have a new talent for finding faults within the society of devotees and the whole disciplic succession as well. Constantly trying to be aware of these minor faults that you find. You become very careful to try to purify yourself. Wearing neck beads no longer, making your forehead with tilak no longer. You have now made up your own new sets of rules and regulations. You have rejected your initiating spiritual master, Diksha Guru, because you now imagine his influence to be a burning sensation in your heart. Purvo mote tali diya, nido mato prochariya, nijo avatar buddhi dhori. Brotochar na manile, Purvo path jolly dile, Mahajane brahmo drishti kuri. Dear mind, you artificially agree with your former opinion, but you really don't accept or follow it. Instead, you broadcast your own whimsical philosophy just to establish yourself as some sort of incarnation. Trying to find mistakes in the spiritual process and activities of the great devotees, you completely toss out your previous spiritual path as rubbish, neglecting all of your former vows and practices. Pota, Dikha, Maladhuri, Dhurtta Kare, Shuchaturi, Ai Tahe, Tomaru Vibhag. 
মহাজন পথে দোষ দেখিয়া তোমার রোষ পথ প্রতি ছাড়ু অনুরাগ you have become most displeased because you think that tilak initiation and neck beads are accepted only by sly cunning cheaters you become angry when you find some insignificant fault with the process of the treat souls and thus you reject all attachment to the path ekhon dekho ho bhai You have renounced pure gold simply to take some worthless ashes. Everyone says that you are bogus. If you don't accept the process of bona fide spiritual service, then how will you be delivered at the time of your death? There's one interesting word Mataji, in the next, in the previous sloka, Shivani Mataji, that first word, Fonta, Fonta? Fonta. Fonta means uh, bindi kind of. Fonta. Fonta is like a bindi, like a tilak. Like a tilak or a bindi. It's Fonta. Acha. Yeah. Acha. Fonta. Okay. Okay. Let's move on. Another weed pulled for this evening. That was a stubborn one there. No comments on that. I'm sure we all know, have a lot of experience with that one. Bogus ecstatic symptoms. Iyar boli bo tore mon, mukhe bolo same thing. Bhutto nagiya hain, unno granthi anchole bandhon. What more shall I say to you, my dear mind? You are expert at giving lip service by always speaking of love for Krishna, love for Krishna. But the real fact is that you are renouncing the real gold simply to tie an empty knot in the border of your cloth. In other words, you lose the substance to grasp at something false. Abhashya Osrupat Lompho Chompho Akushpa well practiced in artificially shedding tears and in suddenly leaping here and there you like to fall on the ground and pretend to be unconscious in ecstatic love for Krishna you perform such mischievous pranks only to cheat the innocent public and thereby broadcast and popularize your own wicked association this is all such nonsense just so you can attract women and money premir sadhana bhukti kate noilo anurakti uddha prem the means of attaining pure ecstatic love for godhead is called devotional service 
if you have no inclination or attachment to this pure devotional process, then how do you expect to factually come into contact with pure love for Krishna? Carefully avoiding the 10 offenses in chanting the holy name. Just worship that name incessantly and you will attain the highest quality of pure ecstatic love when the mercy comes to you. Naam anile shubhajan, shadhu shange shankirtan, naam kunile shubhajan, naam uthya vrikha pori, tanatani follow dhori, but your idea, dear mind, is to neglect the best and most auspicious process of worshipping Krishna, namely the congregational chanting of his holy names in the association of purified devotees. And you don't even bother to try to remember him in a lonely place. This is just like trying to pick fruits forcibly from a tree by jumping at them from the ground. Instead of climbing the tree to properly pick the sweet ripened fruit from the top of the tree, you will simply get the sour, unripe fruits by such a jumping process. Ecstatic love for Krishna, which is completely freed from the propensity to cheat, is just like spotlessly pure gold. And the fruits of such pure love are rarely found in this world. However, my dear mind, your cheating process of imitation, so-called love, is simply a fraud. To get the real pure love, you have to first make yourself a fit candidate. And then true transcendental love will become very easily obtainable for you. Kami preme dakubhai my dear brother, just compare the characteristics of your bogus lust with the characteristics of true love for Krishna. There is practically no difference at all in the external symptoms of both. Nevertheless, this artificial lust is definitely not true love at all. You are completely covered with lust, but you lie and falsely call it prema. Therefore, how will you be the best with real spiritual well-being? So, come full circle. If you would look at that slide that I put up at the beginning of this presentation, and if you were here with us at the beginning, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur began his Upadesha with a very, very similar song that was very, very close to this song, Lust Not Love. And now we've gone through the mentality of the karmis and the ganis and the yogis. And today we've plucked all these various type of anathas. And now Bhakti Thakur wants to hit us again with this lust business. Because hmm? ultimately lust is what takes us away from Krishna. 
that we become envious of Krishna and we lust off of material objects. Dayato Visayat Punset Sangha Teshu Pajayate by contemplating the obje objects of the material senses, the sense objects, then our path to destruction begins. So, it's calling out though the very interesting in that last song and saying that externally there's not any difference really between the external symptoms. Hmm. So he's saying, you know, you everyone else is being fooled by you. You're thinking that you're expressing Krishna Prem, but the truth is externally there may be no difference, but internally you know what you're really doing. You're doing it just for the material, you know. Hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the previous song. Yeah. So for the previous song yeah. For the previous song the the uh both bogus ecstatic symptoms I want to give you a funny little story that I've experienced. And again, I'm going to take you back to Bengal in the remote villages of Bengal when I was a young lad. And we were traveling with His Holiness Jai Pataka Maharaj, going to the remote villages in Bengal where they didn't even have running water. You'd have a pump to pump the water. And there was hardly electricity, only one building in the whole complex they had many many huts and then in the middle of the huts they would have a mandir and they'd have a separate hut for a kitchen separate one for everything it was really far out so one of the first villages i went to something very very bizarre happened all of these elderly people they've been they began to come and start falling in the dust around our feet and, and just wiggling around in this dust when we would enter the village and grab our feet and then take the dust and put it on their heads. And I was shocked. In the West, you will never see someone 70, 80, 90 years old paying obeisances to you, bowing down for you, rubbing in the dust, the, in the dust, taking that dust and smearing it over their body. I was in shock, you know, and one of these gentlemen, he was just, you know, totally in ecstasy, you know, offering his obeisances. And then um, I was thinking, wow, these are such elevated souls. And man, I've never seen these type of ecstatic symptoms ever in my life. Then we showed movies and we distributed prasadam and then the day was over, right? And then we, we were moving on to the place where we were going to stay, which is the next village. And that same old man, he was gathered at the exit of the village. They, they had his whole circle and they were all smoking these big chillum pipes <laughs> at the exit of the village. <laughs> they were... I tell you, I was, it was it was hilarious. I was like, man, this is too much. You know, I was totally confused that day. it took me a while to get over that one. <laughs> so that I, I, that's a little comedy, but yeah, he had, the, he had the he had the externals down. He had the show. He had the show. oh, he had it down. I tell you, I tell you, he he had it down. He was dancing in ecstasy. He was rolling in the dust. But he was enjoying that chillum at the same time. <laughs> uh, I thought I'd just share that. That that's a funny one. All right, so now we're gonna any any comments on that before we wrap things up with the last song. So criticism of uh, your um, your your. Uh, what they call it, Shampada basically obviously is uh, is a no no. Uh, but uh, if there is a if there is a philosophy which is kind of in orthogonal to your Shampada's philosophy, uh, is it is it okay for to us to criticize or how do you really engage in this kind of uh, discussions where you can, uh, without being a fault finding person, you can point out the deficiencies. Yes, that's a good question. The best thing is to be very, very humble. That's what. 
and that for Vodananda Saraswati kind of quote the Prabhupada always would say and my dear sir you are so wonderful and you have such wonderful philosophical points you know and I, I humbly offer my respect respectful obeisances to you but you know please please take some time to study the wonderful teachings of Lord Chaitanya and you'll see that they're simply sublime that was the approach that Srila Prabhupada gave is that he never criticized really other people's philosophies he just gave them the opportunity to expand their knowledge and expose them to the beautiful philosophy of Krishna consciousness it's it's something that you can keep your philosophy and give it a try and you'll see that Lord Chaitanya's philosophy, this Achincha Beta Beta philosophy, this philosophy of devotional service is simply sublime. It has a little bit of everything in it. It's the complete absolute truth and everything is included in it. So the way we look at it is that you cannot, when you're in an advanced state of, of your, your studies, you cannot criticize the people that are in kindergarten, right? Or that someone is is studying PhD on the some same subject, and someone is doing their bachelor's, you cannot criticize the person that's doing their bachelor's. Um, you have to see how ultimately all of these philosophies they they all fit within the puzzle of this material creation, and we've experienced it within the course of this upadesha. Bhaktivinoda Thakur has exposed us to all these different points of views, right? And he is, he is talking very respectful, my dear brother, bye, and very respectful, my dear sir. And he is, he is presenting some very, very nice philosophical ways to take the angle of vision that we as devotees ultimately take. That essentially this material world is... Dukkala and Mashashvitam is a, it's a temporary place. You know, whatever philosophy you have, ultimately you cannot take that with you to the next life. You forget all of that, right? But as someone has very nicely quoted that wonderful slope, right? Naham vipro na cha narapatiya na bivaisho na sudro naham vani na cha kriya patiya no vanashto tatiya va kintu bacha nikara paramananda punamitabir. Gopi Bhartu Pada Kamalayor Dasa Dasa Amutasa. At the end of the day, we are all servants of Krishna. And we can't get around it. No one can say that they are not a servant. I don't care what philosophy they have, no one can say they're not a servant. Alright, Prabhuji, so we're gonna sing this song. Last thank, thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Lust is not love, and my good wife Sachi Mata is in back of me. She's gonna help me with this, and this was a last-minute edition, so we put this together. Even though she's working hard and on the front lines, assisting people with this COVID effort, she's very nicely coming here, and and she's assisting me singing this. So I want to thank Sachi Mata for very nicely joining me here. So. Please tolerate it. This is not one of the best ones we've done, everyone. <laughs> How's the music? Sounds all right? Levels okay? Kinaman. <laughs> Jeti Saduta Jada Vi 
Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Tahabishai matra hari Tahabishai matra hari Kama abadane hai Prima ebe supta pran Kama apadene hai Prima ebe sa Jago Kamo Tudo Kari Prima Jago Kama Tudo Kari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Rame 
छागे प्रेम नागे जागे प्रवेचागे प्रेम नागे जागे क्रमचागी प्रेम नाई जागे क्रमेचागी प्रेम नाई जागे ते कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे हरे कामे प्रेम कबु नहीं लागे कामे प्रेम कबु नहीं लागे अरे कृष्णा करे कृष्णा 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 हरे
Tell me why, my dear mind, why are you forced to dance by lust? And why do you think that such dancing in Krishna consciousness? Your lust is simply abounding in skin and meat and you are addicted to non-stop material sense gratification. Thus, you factually spend your time in running here and there, chasing after worldly sense objects. Kibel sharupo dharmo, teet sharupe premo marmo, kahar vishay matra hori, kaam aborane hai, the soul's original eternal nature is pure love within the innermost core of its spiritually conscious form. And the soul objects of repose for that pure love is Lord Hari. Alas, how lamentable it is that this inherent ecstatic love is now laying in a dormant sleeping state due to the artificial covering of this temporary lust. My dear mind, banishing this lust to a distant place, just rouse and reawaken your sleeping prema. Only in the following sequence does pure love for Krishna awaken. First one develops shraddha, faith, in the process of Krishna consciousness. Then due to that faith, one becomes enthusiastic for sadhu sangha, the association of devotees. Then by performance of bhajana kriya, devotion of worship in the company of the devotees, there awakens nishta, steadiness in service, then ruchi, taste, then asakti, detachment to the Lord. This attachment then gives rise to bhav, genuine ecstatic emotions, from which prema, pure love for Krishna manifests. It's a, it's a reawakening. Only in this sequence does Prem come into being. Ihate jatuna jar, ki pai premo shar. Promo tyage, prem naki jage. E krom, hadhone bhoy. Kano karo dura shoy. 
कामे प्रेम को हु नाही लागे one who endeavors for this bona fide process gets the essence of pure ecstatic love for krishna one who neglects the proper order of this procedure does not experience the reawakening of pure prema my dear mind why are you maintaining the wicked mentality of apprehension and fear of this bona fide method of devotional practice by cultivation of your lust in this mundane sphere you will never be able to touch upon genuine ecstatic love for krishna natukar nai pray hakapot premo bhai tahe matra indriyo santosh indriyo toshon charo sada karu porihar haru bhai aparadh dosh so by the likes of your dramatic performance of dancing in lust you think that this indicative of your brain but it is actually a deceptive feigned imitation of brain thus your whole process is simply gross sense gratification my dear brother always reject such degraded contemplative sense gratification casting out this grave offense to the lord jai wonderful wonderful so that is the first branch of shri shri kalyan kopatru we made it that is our last song it's been a ecstatic journey so sorry we apologize we went over a little bit today we had a lot of material to cover but we made it so transcend into ecstasy thank you all for joining us and hanging in there next week we begin upalabdhi our next part of uh, the transcendent to desire tree of auspiciousness where we start to get the wonderful realizations from shri lakshmi vinod of what happens when we listen to these different instructions we pluck out those weeds what happens next so stay tuned next week we dive into the next branch of kalyana topachiru rikish any final words score any prabhu anyone else gorani pro you are mute you are mute gorani pro just saying thank you we're very glad to have your company thank you all for joining any last comments from our audience i see some wonderful God brothers out there is Govinda Dutt I think he joined us this time. It's Govinda Dutt for who are you out there or you already left? He might have already left us. Thank you all so much. We're uh We're Mama um... Tulsi Mataji you're out there any final words as we finish this first part? Okay. Over to you, Prabhu. Okay. Thank you all. We'll uh look forward to seeing you next week. I have um uh some episodes from previous uh uh weeks to post up on uh YouTube. And um we look forward to uh seeing you all again. Thank you for your company. Uh and thank you Shashi Bhar Prabhu. Vishnu, Shivani. everyone hari krishna have a wonderful week hari bol nice to see you all hari bol rasa hari bol to everyone hari bol to no kubo nice to see you rosma ashray ashray is ashray is here twice he's twice twice as enthusiastic there's two ashray here <laughs> and uh hari bol hari bol enjoying the process so far it's been nice wonderful 
Wonderful. We have, uh, yeah, Radhika and Rosma Suman. If you're in Sharma, Haribo Mata, how are you? Pronounced to you, Hare Krishna. So nice to see you both here, Haribo. I saw we had uh, Krishna was here and Jamuna, Yukari, Kalindi Devi Dasi, Isha. Thanks for joining us. And any else that we missed? Pratyam Prabhu and Damodar Mata. Thank you for that enthusiastic dancing today. <laughs> yeah, it's always ecstatic to see to see my Baltimore parents. All right, have a wonderful week. We love you. We're very grateful for your company. Hari Hari. Very good. Thank you, Shiva.